All right. Good morning, Nona. And welcome, everybody. This is the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast. I am Andrew. This is episode one. Um, if you missed it, the pilot episode may or may not be up on Patreon. I don't know yet. It's a very big file because I fucked it up. It's 185 gigabytes. Um, and I can't remaster the audio because I don't want to. Maybe I will later. Why don't you introduce yourself, Nona? Oh, hi. I'm Nona, but now I was first going to ask, did you remember to take your Ritalin? Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Good job. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm drugged up uh, in accordance with my prescription. Actually, maybe maybe a little bit um, <clears throat> under my prescription, but, you know, PRN drugs, it's nice when you have a provider. See, everybody, a lot of people have problems with the VA. I only have a couple problems with the VA. I don't have the broad, overarching problems that everybody has. I actually get seen. My doctors actually do what I ask. Um, the benefit side, obviously, is completely different. They have the same name, but they're not the same people. So, whatever you say. She stares in, <clears throat> in confusion after almost four years of being in a relationship. It doesn't get it doesn't get any any more clear. Just so you know, so you can just be perpetually confused because that's what everybody is. That's what being in a relationship with you <laughs> is like. I'm not perpetually confused. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyways. I am Andrew Lemax. This is Mrs. Nona Phelps. She just hasn't changed her last name yet. <laughs> That's coming soon. Coming soon. Coming That's soon. Yeah, with a U. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> Sorry for the uh, coughing and throat clearing. I've I've got I've got the little little guy, so I'll try to try to not do it so much. I got one in my mouth too, so. Um, this is, like I said, this is episode one. We did film a pilot on Saturday and it went okay. The audio wasn't the best. Hopefully this audio is better. I did check it 10 times just now. Recorded, 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 recorded. Um, hopefully we got settings locked in, but probably not. Um, this room is also kind of echoey and I hopefully have eliminated that in software. I know somebody's gonna be like, hey, just you should be in a sealed off room and there shouldn't be any air movement and there you should have sound dampening and you have too many flat surfaces. Yeah, we fucking know. Okay. We got four kids and three dogs. But if you'd like to sponsor us, yeah. To we, help fund. We can move it out to the garage, but I need some more equipment because I'm not taking my desk out to the garage. And uh, my laptop here, literally only to remote into my PC that's over there to control the broadcast so I can switch back and forth and monitor things since um, this is a two-person show here. And uh, I guess I should say one and a half. Nona is one and I'm half. Oh, I thought it was the other way around. <laughs> You're running the show. I'm just the side piece. Well, if I didn't run the show, then I'd be a quarter. So okay. trying to... Whatever you say. <laughs> um, so yeah, this podcast is about whatever the fuck we want to talk about. Um, if you don't like it, maybe listen to the next episode. And if you don't like that, listen to the third episode. And if you don't like that, then fuck off. I don't know. Or leave a comment. You can tell us what you want us to talk about. Um, all of those options are viable. Nona is scared of the microphone in case you guys are wondering. So we're going to warm her up to this. I can ramble and I can ramble and nobody wants to hear my voice unless they want to go to sleep. I have a face for radio. Fortunately, fortunately, podcasting is now basically radio. So now you can see my face as well. Whereas on radio, you know, back in the day. Right? A face for radio. Yeah. Who told you that? And Nona has the boobs for TV. I don't know. I said it for myself. I've heard the saying before. Nobody's ever said that to me. They might have. Been, but Nona will tell you I have the best memory. I'm basically an elephant. I never forget anything. <laughs> it's the biggest pile of bullshit I have ever heard in my entire life. Explain. You would forget anything that was told to you in five minutes. Huh. And then turn to me and ask, what, what just happened? 
What do I need to remember? What's happening later? What's happening tomorrow? What do I have for lunch? Okay. <laughs> um, and before we really get started here, uh, our website should be up by the time you guys are watching this. It's he's wrong, she's right .com. Uh There is no merch yet. We are working on that in conjunction with one of my clients. Um, we'll see. Tell us what you guys want. You know, what kind of stuff would you actually be interested in? We don't want to design stuff that nobody wants to buy or wear because, um, yeah, our logo is pretty sweet. But if one of you wants to redesign it and make it actually look legitimate because I did it and I'm not good at design, I take other people's things, I appropriate it, and then I change the color and I make it look decent, and that's about it. I think you did a pretty good job. For hacking stuff together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not I'm not an original. See, as you can see, I was I was the mastermind <laughs> behind appropriating the Guinness logo and swapping out the the words on it. It's about the extent of what I can do. I didn't actually even do this either. Um one of our artists of the company I used to work for. The name shall not be said. The name shall not be said. Can't promote a competitor. <laughs> 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 Um, and it wasn't directly for these guys. These guys are awesome. Check out warriorizing.org, shop.warriorizing.org. Go ahead and plug them right off the bat. I'll make Jason and Ken and Ben and Casey and Alyssa and Dara and Tommy and yeah, those are the names. Those are all the names. I think maybe, I don't know. I haven't been involved with them in almost, when did I go to Iowa? It was almost exactly a year ago, mm -hmm. right? Yep. That was the end of March. Yeah. So. It's probably coming up again. If you're interested in a uh, hunting experience, I think they did pheasant and some other stuff um, out of, I think where I fly to Cedar Rapids. I believe so, yeah. There's a casino. Just look up, look up casinos <laughs> and then look up big hunting lodges within 30 minutes of a casino. And that's... They might not do it there again, but I think they will. They have a good relationship with both of them. Um, their, the keynote speaker for the hunt last year was Nick Lavery, and the keynote for the gala and auction was Marcus Luttrell. So those are the kind of uh, elbows you get to rub with when you go to one of their events. I don't know who they have this year. They were trying to get um, George W. Bush, but they're – the the time out from booking I think it was like six months or something like that and he's like it's like a quarter of a million dollars to book um, plus you have to pay for the charter lodging all that good stuff but well the lodging you don't have to pay for the venue comps it but same thing plus you know they want to have a president former president there it's a cool look because they can promote it too mm -hmm. um, but yeah so now that we've rambled on about Warrior Rising who is not a sponsor of the show. Jason. <laughs> um, is that your bully face? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I mean, Sam just reached out to him the other day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was pretty wild. I'm like the most unknown, partially connected veteran in the veteran community. Most unknown, partially connected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah I, I heard all <laughs> of the pieces that you just tried to put together into yeah. one sentence. Um, this is our beautiful set wall right here. If mm -hmm. you've got some, some art, we might put it here. We might hang something up here. This might change all the time. We're just kicking around ideas. You probably have better ideas because you guys are smart. And everybody in the comment section is always better than the people that are on the show. And that's, about right. and that's why, that's why I've never been in the comment section. Do you realize that? I've never been in anybody's comment section. I don't believe that for a fucking <laughs> second. You are the troll of the internet. No. That's one of the main reasons why I'm off of social media, so I don't have to see your bullshit posts. She's only partially off of social media. She doesn't have personal accounts. We have work accounts that she just doesn't post on. So that's... But he runs <laughs> for me. Yeah. So. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> you see how long it took her to answer? Oh, I've been on her this entire time. If you're watching, If you're watching the video and you're like, why is it just her looking around? It's because I was an idiot. <laughs> I'm looking at the screen over here. Don't even realize that I never transitioned it, even though I'm 
mirroring the screen that's over there. Yeah, whatever. Yes, I'm. <laughs> they've just been looking at you, staring at me while I talk. Uh, I so, no anyways, idea. welcome to the In Incompetence Podcast. I am your leader um, for ADD and ADHD ramblings. I don't actually know which one I have. They just give me pills. Oh wow! I actually think I do know it somewhere, but I don't remember. See, that's how good my memory is. I know, to take, I know to take my pills. I'm not old enough to forget yet. Um, Pretty sure at least three out of the seven days of the week you would come to me. Did I remember to take my pills? Oh, I, I never said I don't remember if I took them. I remember to take them. I don't remember after the fact if I did take them. <laughs> Welcome to the Welcome. podcast. Um, so anyways, my name is Andrew. Some of you might know me from various places on the internet. You may also not know me from various places on the internet. It just depends. Nona doesn't think anybody knows who I am. I never said that. Mm. Mm. I just called you the biggest troll of the internet. I mean. You have quite the reputation, I'm sure. <laughs> Not a good one. I run things like a baking group on Facebook. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've been I've been kicked out of neighborhood groups. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I've been kicked out of Drinking Bros. If you guys are familiar with that one, mm -hmm. um, I've also been a guest on their podcast many many moons ago. Used to also be their web developer, but uh, they're kind of shit to work with. JT is cool, but Ross and Dan are dumb. So. Tell them how you really feel. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's how I really feel. Yeah. I know. <laughs> um, and then, Nona, tell the people about you. Uh, there's nothing to tell. I'm just a mom. Mom of four. Okay, she was born and raised in Wilmington, North Carolina. She never left. She wanted to leave. She never left. Mm -hmm. um, I'm from northern Indiana. I left and went back and then I left again because I had this dream when I got out of the army that I wanted to go back and then I got back and everybody was just still doing the same shit they were doing in high school. And there's only so many people you can meet in a city of a hundred thousand roughly people. So I was like, all right, peace out. I have family heroes familiar with the area. So Nona and I met during COVID. During COVID yeah. at a backyard barbecue. Fourth of July party. And I socially distanced at least 20 plus feet away from you. Mm. And then you slid into my DMs because I refused to talk to you. No, here's what really happened. If any of you guys are familiar with uh, Santa from Drinking Bros back in the oh day, he was on a FaceTime call with the Streeters. That's whose house we were at, if you guys know who they are. And I was inside chatting with him as well. And Melissa Mel, um, or if she's going by Rachel Maloista, I don't know. Who the fuck is Mel Streeter? If you guys remember that joke, that person. Uh, her mom walked inside and said, Andrew, there's some tits outside you should go check out. And the rest is his And then I, I stood on the porch and said, come watch the fireworks. Because in North Carolina, fireworks that leave the ground are illegal. So we have to go down to Myrtle Beach and smuggle them back across the border like the Mexican cartel. Sounds about right. With a lot less logistical problems, because, you know, we don't have to go through customs and border protection. We don't have to cross a river and walk across barefoot, carrying our kids in each arm. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally the same thing, though. Right. <laughs> no difference. <laughs> the amount oh. of hate and backlash you're going to get from that, I'm sure, is astronomical. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> On that note, though. On that note. If you guys want to check out um, Rocco's book, now I can't even think of it, what it's called, Borderline. Check it out on Amazon. I'll link it in the comments. It'll be our Amazon affiliate link, so we'll get like a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a penny if you buy it. Point zero 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 yeah. zero zero one. It'll actually go to our nonprofit, so we would appreciate it. The nonprofit is Veteran Wiki, veteranwiki.org. Check it out. Uh, we're filling basically the entire airspace in this initial episode with plugging friends and pet projects. So 
Friends oh. and pet projects. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Um. Anyways. On yeah, that note. I see you've got a little checklist over here. What are we talking about today? Well, we don't have to go off of the checklist, but. No, people want to know what's on the checklist now. Okay. I've... <laughs> <laughs> okay, checklist number one, serial killers. That is a hot topic for the last, I don't know, probably five years. Say it's it's definitely grown in the podcast realm and discovery obsessions. Oh, you're going. talking about in like was it investigation discovery yes. ID or whatever? Yes, yes. <coughs> Dateline episodes, et cetera, et cetera. I thought you were talking about like court legal discovery. I don't know. So there's there's people who have taken on a whole other side of themselves to find out information about serial killers and, and people involved. Okay. If you say so. Was, what What is your favorite serial killer consumable media project? Oh. See, I'm really dumb on this situation because I feel very new to it. We just started down that path very recently in the last month. Well, no. You mean fictional or non-fictional. Non-fictional. Yeah. True serial killers. Yeah. But we've watched all the other stuff, True Detective. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I mean, I'm brand new to this, whereas this has been an obsession of as America as a whole for the last five years. I think they're more obsessed with the, like, as it happens, like that, was that guy that killed his wife and then disappeared? And people were, like, looking for him in Florida and... Was that from, they were from here in North Carolina, or found here in North Carolina, one of the two. I don't know who you're talking about. It was like two or three years ago. No idea who you're talking about. Somebody put it in the comments, please. <laughs> and if you guys don't know, um, we are on YouTube, Patreon, everywhere. Um, for videos, at least, YouTube and Patreon, there might be some additional stuff coming down the line uh, for audio. We're everywhere. And if we aren't where you want us to be, there are RSS feeds as well. And if those don't work for you, just tell me in the comments where you want us to be. And I will figure it out because it doesn't cost me any money. <laughs> but anyways, so I was having a conversation with Chloe and her friend the other day regarding this. And I feel like it wasn't anything that was taught in school. And so now it's exclusively pop culture related but you were saying the other day that you were taught i'm pretty sure serial killers as a whole i don't know that few individuals i don't know that there was explicitly like a class but no, no no i'm not talking about a class but at least more than one paragraph in a history book for example we just finished watching dahmer i knew nothing about dahmer I was never taught anything about Dahmer in school. That's just not anything that was taught. It kind of did. Do you feel like you're better off for it? <laughs> uh, better off for not being taught it and learning it for the first time on a Netflix series? Yeah. Like, do you feel like it impacted your growth and development? I mean, you say all the time that I'm uncultured. So she's ultimately, yes. She's never seen any movie. <laughs> Ever. But the point being that if he as a whole had been even discussed in a relative term to how it shaped the early 90s and... It just we were never taught anything about him and so i didn't even know that he was killed in prison hmm. and never knew that he ate his victims i learned all of that from netflix which is weird is it weird though yeah how much do you know about world war ii <laughs> more than anything netflix can show <laughs> today. You said more than or less than? 
more than because I'm not going in blind is what I mean. Like I was going in completely blind. But it's a topic that you were taught. Yeah. So you have, you grasp like the very bare minimum, but would you say that? No, Cash? I'm not an expert. Well, Cash is an expert for sure. And he's eight. Right. But that's because he's hyper-focused on it, loves it, and wants to learn more about it. This is true. But the point that I'm trying to make is, do you think that if you watched like any of the shows that Cash and I have watched or any of the movies, that anything would be like a surprise to you? Oh, I'm sure there's going to be surprises around every corner. Things that weren't taught in school necessarily or glazed over due to X, Y, and Z. Probably because I had a social life. You had a social life, but you also had parents that didn't let you have access to anything. True. Very true. So her dad took her laptop, first one that she bought for herself, and snapped it in half. So Thanks. What? It's talking about us mm -hmm. talking about stuff things that have shaped us as yeah. humans nothing has shaped me i'm an original one of one <laughs> that's why you love me so much we are all individuals you are just extremely unique no there's a sign that i saw i think i've told you about this i was at a furniture store in indiana with a guy that i was helping renovate his house mm -hmm. 10 plus years ago okay. and they had one of those little things that you would put like a like a desk nameplate sign mm -hmm. and it said um you're special just like everyone else <laughs> were there any serial killers up from your area mishawaka area mm -hmm. no but all those guys were basically effective at close enough. Like if something happened in Charlotte or Raleigh, you no, would still no, no. consider it like no, within part. Yeah. I, I wouldn't. As far as I know, we've only had one quote unquote serial killer in the Wilmington area. Cause Charlotte's about Charlotte's about as far as like some of the s smaller big cities. I don't know exactly how far Madison is, but I had a buddy that drew, drove up there. His family's from there. They're huge Wisconsin fans. So you'd probably know. Kyle, if you're watching this, tell us how far the drive is. But <laughs> Chicago's not far. Chicago's super fast. Like, if we would have driven past Cole's dad's house, it would, we would have been in Chicago in like 20, 30 minutes. Okay. If there wasn't a blizzard that we had to run away from and almost crash. <laughs> that being said, we have had two dead women. <clears throat> in the last year, 2023, found in shallow bodies of water. And there is speculation that this could be a serial killer. Is it you? No, it is not me. Okay, who says so? But then when you look up serial killer in Wilmington, the only post where this could possibly be is on Reddit, which as you know, I'm not even on Reddit. And the very first comment is, sounds like something a serial killer would say, is it you? To the question, I've been hearing rumors about a possible serial killer in Wilmington. Several women's bodies have been found in water around town over the past six months. Little to no media coverage. Does anyone know anything about it? And this was posted two months ago. Um, so it's probably part of that human trafficking, sex trafficking ring that Jesse and his people. That's very interesting. We know, we know the YouTube lawyer. Um, he has been to our old house. We have been to his house. How long ago was that? that was during COVID too? That is. And we had no idea what was going on, but that you say that because that actually popped up as what other people were searching for underneath serial killers in Wilmington, North Carolina. And his name 
is right here. His name's Jesse Bright, for mm-hmm. anybody curious. He's been on Drink Bros podcast, actually. Uh, so that, and you didn't even know that I was going to bring that up next. No. <laughs> <laughs> for anybody that might have seen that episode, um, I was there with them. I had suggested him be on the show. Uh, this is when they were still in Wilmington, to tell you how long ago that was, because I think they've been in Austin for two, maybe almost three years. Um, but yeah, he uh, he had a an old video of his was retrending on Reddit and Twitter, mm-hmm. and because of that, it was trending on YouTube again, and they were really trying to build the YouTube audience at that time. Mm-hmm. And I was like, reached out to Dan and Ross, and I was like, hey, this is going on, you know. It's, highly searchable content right now he's here do you guys want to have him on the show and 30 minutes later he was in the studio with them so yeah um and his arrest is the number one most read story of 2023 in the port city area so that is interesting which segues to human trafficking which so his wife made a point um posting on social media years ago about how he was helping her pay off all of her debt and he didn't work he drove for uber he was i believe he passed the bar i don't know if he did i I, have no idea i believe he was working i met them one time through you i believe he was working as um like a what does it call them in the state um, state attorney, district attorney? No, 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 no. Defense. Like you're, it's paid by the state, but it's like a Legal public aid. defender. Public defender. Okay. Whether or not he was still like actively practicing or whatever, I'm not sure. I don't even know like what his expertise or whatever was, but um, they moved from Scamming here. people. Yeah. They moved from here and bought a, what looked like a pretty nice house in the Raleigh area. Mm-hmm on the salary of an uber driver and a stay at home mom yeah she was stay at home so um but he was arrested as part of a pretty big human trafficking ring he's mm-hmm. i don't know what they say seven charges against him or something like that something and he's the only one ironically that doesn't have a mugshot at all because he turned himself in well there was some uh, i mean he was an attorney so he probably knows some loophole or mm-hmm. something but um yeah Really weird guy. <laughs> and well, I only met him one time through you. At his house. Mm-hmm. Well, weren't you there when he came to mm-hmm. he came to a barbecue or something? Not when I was. Hmm. So, anyways, yeah, we're um not involved in that. No, <laughs> we not at are, all. We are very distant from that. You knew the. Or knew of, like, the ringleader person, though, right? One of the ringleader people. Um, I had met him a couple of years ago, and he just blatantly told me what he did. And I told him to his face that he was a disgusting human being, and I wanted nothing to do with him. And the fact that he's been known... As if he was trying to recruit you, or...? I sincerely hope not, but I, well, I never let it get past what, anything. What did he say he did? That's the... That that's... He... He admitted and stated that he was a escort service provider and was very proud of his accomplishments in life, apparently. Um, it, it's been known here in the Wilmington area for over 20 years, dating back to Pure Gold. And it doesn't Pure Gold, Pure Gold doesn't even exist anymore, which is a local strip club if people don't know what Pure Gold is. If you've ever watched Eastbound and Down... It's in front of the bowling alley from that show. That was filmed here. <laughs> when he goes bowling with his mom, that's the strip club is in that same parking lot. It's like the government center now, right? They're, they have the whole building. There's a bowling alley still there. The bowling alley is still there. And it's now the Cheetah Club, maybe? Something like that? When you go to Costco today, you can look at it. Let everybody know. I'll go to Costco tomorrow and look for okay. it. I don't want to go. Sorry. Okay. Remind <laughs> remind Nona in the comments and I'll relay it to her. What she doesn't use any of the even when she did use social media, she doesn't use anything fun. She just posts pictures of the kids. Not to say that that's not fun. I'm just when I say like 
fun on social media. Like she doesn't use Twitter or Reddit. She's on Reddit because it was a Google search result, not because she actually uses it. That's correct. <laughs> and that was Todd, by the way, Todd Evans, that we were just speaking of. But yeah, um, Wilmington is top 10 in the nation for human trafficking. It's slowly gone down. It used to be number one or number two, but now I believe it's number nine. Who's buying? Who's buying? Yeah, like I can I can think of a million, maybe not a million. I can think of a handful of other cities that would all fit that bill, like Miami, Vegas, mm-hmm. L.A., New York, but like specifically like Miami, Vegas, mm-hmm. maybe Atlantic City. Well, I think the Port Authority were not in tune with what was going on for several years, and so... They were able to slip through. You think they were like coming through in, in container ships? Yes, yes absolutely. <laughs> this is a port city. That's 100% how they were coming through. But this is like one of the smallest ports on the East right. Coast. And again, I believe, I don't know this for sure, but they were able to go under the radar for so long because the Port Authority was not aware. Just the same way that heroin is so bad here. But it's gotten better. We're only number nine now on human trafficking, which is absolutely terrifying having almost teenagers now. Well, you have one teenager. Well, okay. He, uh, I'm not worried about him. Not worried about the 13 year old. It's the one who just turned 12. That one. I'm worried about. I don't know. I think she'd rip somebody's eyes out and she would. You say that. She would, she would. And you would hope in that situation, but nobody can, nobody can know for sure until you're actually in that moment. And a lot of times that happens, the person freezes and doesn't know how to react. And No, she could, she would intentionally annoy them to death. Annoy them to death. You think that they aren't drugging their victims? To make them... I don't, know. I don't know what these people do. Right, I don't know either, but all of these things go through my mind as a mother to almost teenagers. Just arm them. What? So we'll just arm them. Disarm them? Just arm them. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's tell all of the world that you're going to start sending your kid. <laughs> no. Don't even say it. I'm not. You're the one who implied it. No, I didn't. You just did. <laughs> arm them with knowledge, Nona. Okay. Okay, let's arm them with knowledge. Yeah. See? And pepper spray. My stomach's growling. I should have eaten. I hear it. I can hear it from here. Can they hear it? I don't know. We're not listening to the audio, so I guess we'll find out later. <laughs> We've got angry dogs. Sounds like your dog. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wait, we both know it's your dog. So this house is pretty decent size, but it's four bedrooms, three bathrooms, and six people. So obviously we sleep in the same room. Uh, is that obvious? <laughs> I don't think that's obvious. You sure? (laughs) Um, The two youngest sleep in the same room. That happens to be where the dogs are right now. They're because we have two doors. There's a door to the stairwell and then a door at the the entrance to the bedroom. So a little better sound isolation rather than you guys hearing clicking and clacking and dogs barking and doorbells ringing and Bella squeaking. And your dog heavy panting and aggressively letting you know from a distance that she misses you so much. This dog's in pain. It's old. And she's scratching at the door. I hear her. So I think our first episode is over. No, Second. it hasn't even started. What? Uh, no. No. Hasn't even started. No. What kind of nonsense is this? No, we're only 34 minutes in. Yeah. Oh, that's a perfect time for one episode. No, no, absolutely not. They're fine. I put their water bowl up there. 
They've got all the bones. They've already eaten this morning. They've all been out twice. They're all good. They just don't want to be in the room. Mm -hmm. I put the music on for them so they've got soothing bedtime music. All right. And talk about the last topic on my list. Teenagers, which I've already mentioned a few times. So when I was a teenager, I wasn't allowed to do anything, which I believe you have mentioned. Meanwhile, you were allowed to do everything, included but not limited to spreading your seed all around the school. <sighs> So I was good looking at the time being in a relationship with you, knowing all the things that you did at 12 years old and all the things that I did not do at 12 years old. And now having a 13 year old and a 12 year old, not to mention a nine year old and eight year old as well, but knowing the diverse home situations and, um, your exploratory methods that you uh, have conducted throughout the years. I am absolutely terrified having teenagers. And I wasn't actually prior to meeting t you. So um, I don't really know what to say otherwise. Um, you will be fine. Me. They'll be fine. You terrify me. They will be fine. You terrify me. They will be fine. Uh, Cooper's probably just figuring out how to make you, you cringe. <laughs> I told you I'm not worried about the oldest. It's the second and the third. The girls. The girls coming into this world as teenagers. Well, you're the one that opted for charter school, which is a lovely bubble. It is a lovely bubble. Is that better or worse? Because it's everybody knows better. everybody knows the trope of the Catholic schoolgirls. Once they go to regular school, they lose their fucking minds. I've never heard that. I've heard Catholic school and no 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 and rebelling against the no 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 and it's a mortal sin and so therefore i'm going to explore i've never heard catholic school and then going to regular school and seeing college not just transitioning from middle school to high school yeah i mean i feel like that's all regards of any kind of strict but when household. you but when as a teenager you wouldn't say that i'm a strict parent would you I think that open communication is important. What does that have to do with being strict? That's what I just said, that if you've gone from a strict household to now college of a free-for-all, then it also... But that... They can still communicate with you. That doesn't make any sense. It makes perfect sense to me. Okay. I'm talking about doing stuff yeah when you have free reign to just come and go from the house and don't have to actually check in and things like that that's completely different from being able to come and tell you that they're hungry i don't think that's what i was talking about at all i was exaggerating to the other end of the spectrum no like we'll we'll talk about chloe's dating situation in this regard, I think that it's important to communicate what's going to happen in a potential relationship and what the uh, mindset going into it is and communicating that to your parents so that way they're able to help facilitate that or guide you in the appropriate way, but simply... Uh, when are you going to start buying them condoms? Ooh. When they come to me and say that they need it? Do you think that's going to happen? Um, I would hope that they come to me and have that conversation. I don't think they would come to you. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't 
see that happening anytime soon with Cooper or Clary. So it's just not something that's even crossed my mind, honestly, until right now when you put me on the spot. Um, but again, open communication. And if that conversation was to happen tomorrow with my 12 year old, um, no, I think 12 is way too young to be having sex. What which... about birth control? <clears throat> Um, birth control is definite, like, you mean in general, because condoms is a form of birth control. No, if Chloe came to ask, Chloe walked up to you and said, mom, I want to get the pill. Okay. Well, she hasn't even gotten her first period. So okay. that but I'm asking like, so we would have this whole conversation about going to a GYN when she gets her first period. She a moot point right now. Okay. Okay. Who says so? But I also think that medicating your child immediately in any regard, you know, will lead to this monster over here. <laughs> I wasn't medicated. Uh, okay. I was never medicated. I don't even think Eric ever was. Okay. Eric was the only one that ever got kicked out of school, got bad grades, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I got good grades and skipped school. I know. I had the best of both worlds. And you uh, did all the bad things. All the bad things. Smoking weed is okay, not well, terrible. I wasn't saying it on the podcast for you to bleep out it was, it was like 20 plus years ago okay 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 we're talking about high school yeah yeah i'm, I'm 36 you were 12 in high school i don't think so pretty sure you were in middle school when you started because you told me 12. Probably. Right, so 12. 12 is young. I don't know. Please school us in the comments because I feel that 12 is way too young to be having sex. How are you going to stop it? Yeah, sorry about that. How am I going to stop? How are you going to stop them? Um, I mean, no parent can stop their child from doing anything but how are you gonna prevent it again you also can't prevent it but again as i said open communication with your child what i'm getting at is are you just going like if we were down here watching a movie okay. and you heard the door close okay and then you heard some sounds are you letting it go? Oh my goodness, at 12 years old. Um, ooh. Well, I don't think that we would allow the door to be closed at 12 years old with somebody that they were seeing romantically. But what if they learn their lesson from this person? past one and now they're not telling people yeah um that's really difficult to say because again this is just a hypothetical and what i might do in the moment is not necessarily what i have in my head um but no i as I've already said, 12 is too young to be having sex. So you would stop it? I believe I would prevent the door from being closed. Okay. If you say so. <laughs> I, I, what would you do based off of your history? What would you do? I don't know. I feel like in that situation, you would bang on the door. <laughs> and... 
The answer is different for boys and girls, though, too. Ew, would you, like, cheer him on? No. It's just, like, what do you no. mean the answer is different? If Chloe I... was dating boys, we wouldn't Se let her. Sex is sex, though. It oh, doesn't we... matter whether it's with a boy or a girl. The consequences potentially are it's... vastly different, too. Okay, yes, but. If Chloe's got a girl in her room, the consequence of that is only going to be emotional, maybe physical, but there won't be a baby. Okay, but sex is more than just procreation. So I don't think at 12, a child is mature enough right. to have a sexual relationship. On what age do you think they will be? Honestly, every child is different, but it's hard to think of your own children in that regard and definitely can't put a number on a blanket. Well, Cooper is almost 14. Yes. And I don't so how long, think that how long he you... personally is mature enough, but I've always joked that he and Chloe are similar on the maturity level and they're... 20 months apart from each other so and they do always say that boys are a year or two behind girls so that would, do they say that they do say that okay so that would line up that she just turned 12 and he'll be 14 this summer and they are similar in maturity so for him I could maybe say 16, 17. I'm getting to that point of mentally and physically being in a state to have a relationship with somebody and also a sexual one. Chloe, maybe 14 to 16. Not that I am encouraging that young. I'm just, they're two very different children and their maturity levels are different. Their ages are different. Their interests are different. Everything is different about them. So do you think, you, re you really don't think that Chloe would come to me for anything? Not at this point in time. Because at this point in time, she and I do have a good relationship, whether but, that was to change. But I don't, I'm not saying that the relationship would change. I think she is smart enough that she knows how and who to ask what questions. But she also knows that a good majority of your answers are, did you talk to your mom? What did your mom say? Well... Because I'm not the one in charge of that. But, right, so. but if she asked me a specific question and I could tell by the way she phrases it, like, what would you do if this happened? Okay, so you're asking if she would come to you for guidance, not assistance. For, like, I guess it would just be essentially a differing opinion. Like, how does, okay, if I talk to my mom, my mom probably is going to tell me something comforting or she's going to tell me this, but Andrew will answer like, how will the world look at me? How will Andrew look at me? Okay. Cause you want to keep them. So again, guidance versus assistance. Sure. Sure. Then that's a completely different question. How many times do you think they've caught us? And how much do you think they know? Caught us having sex? Yeah. Um... <laughs> I don't really want to know. <laughs> um, they've probably heard us a handful of times. Caught us? I don't think ever. But... Well, they've never barged into the room. Right, but... right. But, I mean, Cash has definitely, like, sat outside the door before. <laughs> We've come out of the shower and been like, um, how long have you been there? 
Yeah. So yeah, they've probably heard us a handful of times. That's why it was nice at the other house with the gate at the bottom of the stairs for the dogs. Because um, we would hear the gate before anybody. Yeah, could... but the downside of the old house is all the bedrooms were on the same floor, and so. And so now we'll, a lot of now, privacy. Now we'll just hear Cooper's headboard from above us. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to think about that at all. And yes, I know he's at the age where the showers are getting longer and the door is getting closed more. But I'm not thinking about it. The door isn't getting closed more. The door is just always shut. He would never leave his bedroom if he could piss and shit in his bedroom and <laughs> eat in his bedroom. <laughs> uh, yeah. The privacy and self-exploration time, I'm sure. You're sure. Yeah, he's at that age, but I don't want to think about it. Okay. Okay. Well, we've got about 10 minutes or so left. Ew, so why so long? Because we want about an hour long episode. We're at 51 minutes. I think 45 minutes is long enough. It's no, not at all, because we got to talk about stuff about us. Stuff about us. Yeah. All right, stuff, stuff, stuff. Well, now that that's over with, let's go ahead and conclude. <laughs> um, yeah, check out he's wrong, she's right .com. Uh We have all of the social media. We've claimed even ones that we will never use, like TikTok. Hopefully that ban goes through without language that allows them to do anything else because, you know, the government has to fuck everything up. It's, it's basically like a requirement. It's a job requirement. It's in the description and everything. Have to be able to fuck over your constituents and the economy. If you can't check that box, you can't be a politician. Tell them how you really feel. I just did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're on all social media channels. We are, the podcast is in video format. So if you're listening in audio, it is available on YouTube. It is available on Patreon. Patreon will house things like our pilot episode that, uh, we filmed on Saturday. Today's, uh, it's March 18th. The test. Yeah. Uh, so you'll be able to see that unedited because I'm not worried about monetization there. If there's any bleeps in this one, you're like, oh, I wish I knew what they said. Just check out Patreon. There's a uh, subscription tier for those videos that will be behind that paywall. I think it's $3 a month. Um, there's another higher tier where uh, you'll be able to actually have like direct one-to-one -one engagement with us. I don't know what the perks are. Go read them for yourself. Um, I just clicked a couple boxes because they look cool. And if you guys want higher tiers, I will gladly add higher that tiers. It sounds like when he filled out the marriage certificate. Just checked off a couple boxes. They looked cool. Whoops, didn't mean to check off that we were related. Let me fix that. Yeah, no, that's not a, that's not a thing. <laughs> not a thing at all. Um, what else? Our set is um, shit. Our equipment is things that I already had on hand. Amazon special. Basically. Um, it was stuff that I used for just video meetings during COVID. Um, I mean, the majority of my work is, has always been remote. So I've kind of, I needed it beforehand. I just never wanted to video conference with any of my clients. And then it kind of became a necessary thing, being able to screen share rather than just you know, being on the phone. Oh yeah, I can fix that. What does it look like? I don't know. I'll send it to you. <laughs> now I have to do live previews and the expectations there. So, um, they're decent. It's, it's not like the cheapest thing you can buy, but they're not high end cameras. They're just Logitech Brio 4k streaming webcams. Essentially there's three of them. Um, I only ever got to Nona's view because never looked at me just the one off, but yeah, I went to your camera and been on the, the split camera the entire or the rest of the time. Microphones as well. 
um, cheap Amazon special. We've got tons of janky lighting and tripods that we already had. And uh, the lights are being powered by emergency flashlights that have batteries built into them. And then we've got a big work lamp that's reflecting off the ceiling to give us a little bit more lighting. And then we've got a light right here to give more even lighting on our face. And the lights are on throughout the house. <laughs> Uh, We've got a window blinded open. Blinded with a massive headache now from all of it. Yeah, just wait until we get the real lights. So we will have an Amazon wish list at some point for stuff if you guys want to you know, pitch in. Um, all of the other you know, traditional, if you, if you want to throw Nona some money, if you want her, want her Venmo, um, what? you're not going to get anything from it. I'm not letting you have any, any fee picks. Definitely not any topless pics. You guys aren't getting anything, is what I'm getting at. <laughs> I love how you're very uh, clear just... about topless, as if they could try for something else. Oh, it's all they can see. They can't see what else you look like. I mean, so. <laughs> <laughs> what? Asserting <clears throat> your dominance? Yes. Okay. Um, but yeah. If you want to kick any donations, if you want to. Uh, for potential sponsors, yeah. there will be a form on the website that you can reach out to us. No, we'll not give you our contact information. Anybody that goes and tries to find our contact information and go through unofficial channels, I'm just going to ignore you with uh, filters in the email. It's never going to make it to the inbox. So um, wouldn't waste your time. That's kind of my thing. IT and security and things like that. Um, and it comes to my corporate email. So all the same filters that I have set up for my business also apply to this podcast. So, you know, I'm not going to tell you what those filters are. Just know that you're not going to get through. You can try. If you get if you get a, a rejection message, it's not going to tell you what was in it. It's just going to tell you that you're dumb. And uh, you might get Rickrolled too. There might be a link to... to you, you might get a response that looks legitimate and there might be a link to uh, Rick Astley's video on YouTube. Cute. Yeah. On that note, find us in places, share us with your friends, comment wherever you see our content. Um, I will engage with you. I will reply to you, at least for the first, I don't know, day or two. Unless we're having a good conversation, then I might reply for longer. And then tell us, what do you think is the appropriate age to start having sex for boy and girl? They're going to say never. Never. <laughs> I doubt they're going to say never. Don't say never. Well, let's find out. If it's, if it's a guy, they're going to say never. Yeah. My, my daughter will never, ever 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 even know what a boy looks like until after she's married yeah gotcha yeah <laughs> cannot leave the house cannot go to school no books basically taliban law no <laughs> no that's not funny no they do normal stuff but dads don't want their daughters doing anything to be exactly like they were I don't know what you're talking about. 12 years old? That's disgusting. Hey, at least it was with older girls. Oh my God, that doesn't make it any better. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, if you say so. <sighs> so anyways. On that note, this has been episode one of the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast. Uh, thank you for joining us on behalf of my beautiful wife. Oh, she actually kissed me. I don't think I didn't she was going to do that. <laughs> I was just trying to be silly. Oh, okay. Um, we probably won't do guests. If we do guests, they'll be very infrequent. We don't really have a cadence yet because um, we kind of got to coordinate filming when nobody else is here. That way you don't get kids 
bumping into the background or dropping stuff or breaking stuff or screaming that they're fighting with their other sibling and dogs barking and doorbells ringing and doors opening and closing and chaos. And <laughs> so essentially what we're saying is we're giving you guys our free time. Yes, that is correct. So uh, tune back in. There will be plenty of methods. Uh, those of you that already know me know that I love to have a good old back and forth on social media. So don't roll your eyes at me. I didn't roll my eyes. Everybody, the whole world could feel, even the audio listeners could feel you rolling your eyes. While they were riding in their car, listening to the audio, they could feel it. I am it fighting back the all the words right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they want to see you on a on a drunk episode, I'm sure. Oh my goodness. But I don't drink. So, he says wearing a Guinness shirt. Mm-hmm. Kind of stopped. Gotta lose some weight. She says I'm fat, so. I love how he said kinda. There's always an exception. That I'm kinda fat? What's the exception to me being? No, you said you kinda stopped drinking. Oh, and then you. There's always an exception. And then you like, you bullied me. You're like, hey, go run to the ABC store. Uh, We we have state control liquor here. It's called the ABC store. And now they check your ID with your card that you're paying with. So even though we're married, I can't even use her card. She can't use my card. You can only use a card that has your name. If you have a picture on your card, it has to be your picture. It has to match perfectly. They do that at Costco too. Yep. Well, kind of. I feel like when you're in the self-checkout and it's busy, they just kind of, they just look at the card and they're like, oh, okay, cool, scan it and you're good to go. But yeah, I have had that argument. I've used somebody else's card before you got us a membership and it was a corporate card. It wasn't even a, a personal account. I was literally shopping for the bakery. I was picking stuff up for them with their card and they were like, wanted to give me a hard time. I'm like, what do you want me to do? What? What am I going to do with all this flour? You think I'm buying this flour for me with somebody else's membership card? Do they need to stand here and hold my hand? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The answer is yes, actually, according to Costco policy. The member has to be there along with the cardholder has to be there. Dumb. Anyways, this has been the show. It might look good. It might sound good. It might not. Um, if it doesn't tell us how we can improve, tell us what equipment you would use because you know it all. Um, you're not going to be able to send any links because I have disabled links in all of our, um, YouTube comments and things like that, but you can spell out what it is. Go to Amazon and look up this company and buy this thing. I might do it. If I do it, I'll, I'll respond to you. I'll be like, yeah, that looks cool. And if I don't, I'll be like, why would you tell me to look at that? Look that up. That's that's terrible. That's dumb. You're not very intelligent. Oh my. <laughs> You're such a kind person. I am the nicest person these people have never met. Mm-hmm. Well, on that note, your dog is aggressively scratching at the door, so I think it's time to go. All right, guys. See you in the next one, hopefully very soon. Mm-hmm. We might even record it today. We will, as soon as we take care of the dogs. Yep. Bye-bye. Goodbye.